Welcome to Pirate Living Podcast. We are your hosts, Karan and Kristen. On this podcast, we are highlighting extraordinary people living extraordinary lives. These are pirates who take small, bold actions daily to create social change. Pirate life is all about rebelling and breaking the rules for good. Creating lasting social change starts by first breaking our inner rules. After all, the hardest rules to break are your own. The pirates we highlight have dedicated themselves to creating good trouble. Today on our podcast, we're talking to Jared Davis, aka Captain J. Davis, which I assume is his pirate name. Jared is a community leader and freedom coach of a program that has had a huge impact on me personally, The Strong Coach, where Jared and his pirate crew guide coaches through a four-month intense personal and business transformation so that coaches can experience more freedom and success in their business. Welcome, Jared. We're excited to have you here today. Thanks for having me on here. And that's a beautiful intro. Thank you. You know, um, I, I always yeah. get nervous when people are like, can you, uh, can you explain the strong coach? And it's like, <laughs> and sometimes I knock it out of the park and other times it just gets long winded because like, well, then we do this and then we do that. So I appreciate it, that simplicity. Well, and it helps when you've experienced it yeah. firsthand. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we would love for you uh, to tell us your tale of how you got started on your pirate journey and, and where you are today. Well, my pirate journey, how we got here. Uh, Air Force Brett, I never really considered myself an Air Force Brett, but it was always, we moved around every year and a half. Uh, my dad is a super whiz, one of the smartest human beings that I know. Uh, and then also just this overachiever. And I mean that with all the positive and negative implementation, implications. Yeah. And so how we got into this, and he just kept like leveling up the newest plane, the newest endeavor, whatever. And he was just called forward. So I was toted around the, the U.S. for the majority of my life. And that's still in my blood. Uh, every two to three years, I start looking around like things need to change. I even don't even like sitting in the same like living room space for too long without going like, what if the TV was over here? Just to change perspective. I have always, I've always appreciated that. And so for many years, I just kept moving along, moving along, moving along. And um, that became my superpower uh, to be able to fit into new places relatively quickly, uh, make friends, and then also become the captain of really whatever it was that I joined. Uh, and so even in sports like track and field, I was named like team captain. And it's like, I threw shot put discus and did high jump. Like it's the first three events of, of a track meet. If you've ever been, they take like two and a half, three hours. And so I was done in roughly 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just had free reign of, you know, the athletes I'd be, I'd go up to the the starting blocks like guys if you just run faster than those guys you'll win <laughs> and like I, it was this motivational speeches like that all over the place you know if you don't hit down any of those hurdles you'll run faster and it was <laughs> it was really fun going in there but i even did things that were that were awkward because i just felt comfortable talking to adults again i was just surrounded by a lot of moms a lot of dads a lot of high achieving people and so i got really comfortable around authority uh and so even in high school i would like i got a job at the office uh, like talking over the intercom and talking to the principals talking to the teachers but i was on the student council like but not really i just showed up to all the meetings and just told them what my opinions were uh, but i was really comfortable doing that because i thought i had a creative mind and people liked when others spoke up and so anytime there's a chance to be a part of a group share your ideas and and be a voice i love it i love stepping into those things um, and i'm also larger than life i am six seven i'm gonna i'll talk my my big boy stats. I was 6'7", 245 pounds. I was just huge, massive human me. I love it. Um, I'm a little smaller now, not necessarily in height, but in weight. Uh, that was back in the heavy weightlifting days. Um, but I also knew that that meant that I showed up in the in-person stuff really well. Um, I 
provide a lot of safety for people. Um, I also provide a lot of protection when shit gets crazy. People come to me because they know I'm not going to move that much um, and I can be there for a lot of people. And so one thing came to another, I got into uh, to CrossFit. Uh, I love the the gamification of things. I loved really the simplicity of getting workouts done in like seven to 14 minutes. That was like the selling point for me because I'm also really lazy. I like to sit around and do nothing, but having these short, intense workouts, and then all of a sudden I got in better shape than when I played college basketball. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And I really noticed that like it, the precision of things could put someone into like an awesome setting, but then it could also screw someone up in a really bad way if they were off. And so I really leaned on to this captain role, this coaching role, and I always get picked up as a coach in the things that I do. Um, and so naturally when I came about the strong coach, I got to work with these other coaches in the same thing, like the little shifts in how you show up for things or how you don't show up for things can really make or break your business. Uh, and so I really got to continue this captain and coaching role through everything that I do and, and the, the amazing opportunities that I've gotten to work with such a diverse group of people. Cause it wasn't just working with CrossFit athletes. Now I got to work with coaches that are doing jujitsu coaches that are doing language work coaches that are doing holistic health coaches that are doing sound healing coaches that are doing storytelling like there's a coach for everything uh and so a lot of the systems that are in place are very similar to if you're coaching olympic lifting there's there's these five things that you do to warm up and there are these five things that you do to run a successful business and so i got to really see a lot of those carryovers and i get to show up fully as a coach coaching principles and helping people through their uh their transition into whatever it is that they want to create and then you start getting recognized by people and they invite you on their podcast to talk about how awesome you are. <laughs> True story. <laughs> awesome people doing awesome things. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm here talking to you two. Yeah. Strong ass women. I appreciate mm-hmm. you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so with the work that you're doing and um, in your role as a leader, what is the social rebellion that you're looking to start or have oh. you started with the people that you work with? Oh. The enti- th- this is the thing that brought me to the strong coach that really like hit it in deep was was that we wanted to heal the fitness industry what you see on magazines what you see on social media really what's been pumped out there is so skewed it's all about reps and sets and how the outside of everything it's the packaging mm-hmm. and eh, it's great for a band-aid. It's great for a motivation, but it's not the lasting results that people are looking for, that they truly want. Um, and so working from the inside out, and a lot of people call this like holistic health, uh, but what we're looking for is like that whole system, like it's, it's focusing on you first and then growing, uh, going outward from there. What do you need for movement? What do you need for nutrition? What do you need for recovery? What do you need for excitement? What do you need for love? Those things uh, are all wrapped up in healing the fitness industry. Mm-hmm. And so if there is a social rebellion that we're going after, it's, it's that. It's not the outside in approach that fitness has been telling us and our health has been telling us or diet fads have been telling us, but it's really the inside out approach and really connecting with the person that's in front of you and making a clear distinction between training and coaching. And that training can look however you want, but coaching is something that's personal. Something is that it's a connection to your source, to your soul. And then you build from there. Yeah. So are you looking to make coaching more uh, relational versus transactional? Beautiful. Beautifully said. Absolutely. It is about the relationship. Uh, and yeah, I'll go here. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> many coaches out there, including myself for many years, were coaching from a place of a wounded person. They didn't feel good about themselves. They didn't like the way that they fit into this community. There was all these th- these, these strategies and tr- traumas that they were trying to cover up through their own health and fitness. They got good at it. They had a following and now they coach it. And now when they coach people, they're also coaching from this wounded place. 
So this like, you got to do this, you got to earn this. This is really driving aspect of it is a wound in a relationship to self. And so coaches really need to better the relationship that they have with themselves. And then when they show up with that, that healed or healing behavior, and they bring it to this other person, this next circle out, that's really when the magic happens. That's when the people really make lifestyle changes and they start getting these results that they've always wanted before, because you're connecting with the person and then you can do all your tips and tricks afterwards Mm -hmm. to get them the body that they're looking for. Fantastic. But what's that rooted in? Because if it's shallow roots, it's just not going to last. But if it's attached to what you really want for you, what you really want for your kids, what you really want for your spouse, what you really want for your family, then, then you'll get those lasting results. Yeah. So much of what the fitness and and nutrition industry tell us is that um, once you get the body, then you'll have all the other good things. You'll feel so much better about yourself when you're a size two. Well, I mean, I know I've been a size two and I felt no better about myself. Um, and so where do you think the, that, that comes from with the fitness industry? Why do you think the fitness industry, how did it, how did it get broken? Because it sex sells. <laughs> what, because... You mean personal transformation on the inside doesn't sell? No. <laughs> Doing the hard work doesn't sell (laughs) when you're half, when you're, when you're halfway in. Yeah. Yeah. That's when it works. Right. When you get smacked across the face with something, then it's like, Oh yeah, I need, you know, I need to work on this spiritual side of the energetic side, uh, however you see it, but it's tough to get people to start there Mm -hmm. because that's not what we're conditioned to see. And so, I mean, even the, the original CrossFit uh, mottos were look better naked. I think it was CrossFit Miami's for a very, a very long time. And that just continues to perpetuate out and out and out and out. Is that, that's what it looks like. Uh, it's be skinnier, it's be fitter, it's look at all these action figures. And there's, there's just so much stuff that we see uh, because the spiritual transformation doesn't show up well on Instagram besides hanging out with some cool ass people and finding a community. And that's really what people want is connection and friendships that actually comes on the healing side of things, the trauma bonding, the, the competitive bonding. It's great for short periods of time, but then if you get hurt or, you know, trends change, all of a sudden now you might not fit in because, well, you can't show up at this time or you can't lift this heavy weight or you don't want to do these, I don't know, the shake weight, whatever it is. (laughs) But on the other side of things, when it is relationship building, when it is planted firmly in this spiritual and energetic work, you guys can hang out with a handful of people. It doesn't matter where you come from. It's good people meeting good people. It's healing people, helping healing people. And that's the stuff that really builds these um, these communities. Uh, and that's really where you find friendships in the gym. It's not necessarily through the pain, uh, but it's really through that recovery, and that bonding. Um, that's how I see it growing. And where do you see, um, in your work, most of the coaches going wrong? <laughs> um, they they rely on their tips and tricks and it's, it's, I guess this would be a blanket statement is that they're, it's the ego getting in the way, but really what we're saying is if you have a route that you've taken a handful of people, it's A, B, C, and you get D. Mm-hmm. And they will try to sell all you need is A, B, C. All you need is A, B, C. All you need is A. No one, and if they're not hearing it, if pe- people aren't looking for A, B, C, it's what's happening before that. Mm-hmm. Because if you talk to anyone that's joined a gym or joined a program, there's a lot of suffering happening before they even start looking for it. Mm -hmm. And so how do you connect with that suffering? Or I don't like talking about it like this, but this is the general terminology of like going into their pain or going into their suffering, but you really have to understand what's happening in their life right now. Mm -hmm. And when you show up for that message, and it's very vulnerable to I think people don't want to talk about it because they think it's private information. 
so many coaches I talk to, they know they're great coaches because clients come and talk to them about everything. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I'm more of a therapist than a coach. And it's (laughs) like, well, you're a shit marketer too, because you're not taking what you know and actually putting that out as your front facing message. Mm-hmm. Because if someone is willing to talk about the, the scary, the hard stuff, the vulnerable stuff, that's going to be the, the message. That's going to be the sign to go, oh yeah, that I, I, I am just constantly scrolling Instagram while I'm at the treadmill at the gym. Mm-hmm. And I remember that being one of the first posts that someone was like, it was as if you knew that I was scrolling on the treadmill at the gym. And then I came over and I saw that you guys were doing something different. She was a member for three years. Mm -hmm. And so when you really get to understand what people are going through, that's what you're sell. Like, that's what you're, that's what you're selling people on is like, I can help you get out of that. And on the inside, I have this system for you, Mm -hmm. right? How it gets done. They really don't care how you do it. They just want to know that you can do it. Um, and so that's where a lot of coaches go wrong is they tell you it's how, this is how you do it, but they don't care about your solution. They want you to know, recognize where they're at, what are their problems, what are they dealing with, what, are, what is it that they actually want, and then serving that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can always tell when um, like one of my Instagram posts hits home when I get responses from people that are like, you use my exact words, or that's exactly what I was thinking, or this is exactly what's happening to me. It's like, you're in my head. And, uh, it's, it's very different from, you know, writing a post about the importance of, I don't know, taking your vitamins, whatever it is, right. Um, putting out that information versus like relating in your social media. And is that something that you guys teach? Absolutely. Knowing uh, dying well, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for these alley <laughs> um, One of the best things here is that we, we really get people to, the, one of the best practices, and this is for really everyone, every profession, if you're looking to make an advancement and you work with other people, go talk to other people, right? You think that you have all these answers, And the replacement there is you imagine you have all the answers. What we can do is we can go have conversations with people that we're working with or people that we want to work with. This could also be if you're looking for a career advancement, go talk to people that are on the same level as you or go talk to your bosses and you ask them questions about what are the things that they're looking for? What are some of the results or performance indicators that they're looking for? And they're telling you everything that you can then post in your marketing. They can tell you everything you can post on your resume that's going to make you stand out, right? And so using the language of your clients and the stories of your clients, it's not a, it, it's not a privacy infringement because you're not saying like, oh, I was working with Karan and then she told me all these personal things. Do you relate to this? That's a not what we're doing at all. Mm-hmm. You know, but we can say something like, do you experiencing Wi-Fi glitches on a regular basis? <laughs> Only on Wednesdays. By the way, in you... case you haven't noticed, Kristen is not talking a lot today um, because Nothing. it's Wi-Fi Wednesday. It is. <laughs> no ants this time, though. <laughs> That's great. So this is, this is how it's, it's really looking at like, it's not a personal message that you're sharing, but you're talking about this story, this thing that can be also manipulated into creating some of your own words within it, but it's going to show that you're listening to the people and you understand these types of people. uh, And you're making it less about how, how cool am I? How interesting can I be? What are the things these are, this is my bag of tricks. That's not how you're going to win you know, win a relationship. It's really the people that are taking the time to listen and then reflect back what they're hearing. And so that's what, that's, that's your marketing. That's your offer or what you're selling. Mm -hmm. And so many people just sit back and they rely on this cool trick that they learned. Oh, I got this certification. uh, And so now I'm a weightlifting coach. So you want to get better at weightlifting? Come to me. It's like, that's not the, that's not what they're saying, Mm -hmm. but you can say like, are you, are you in the gym and you're tired of not getting the results? Like, are your lifts just not adding up or do they seem scary to you? Like, are you not doing Olympic lifting because you're afraid of hitting yourself in the head? And then they're going to be like, yes, I don't want to hit myself in the head. It's like, great. 
Come on over. Why do you want to do this? We'll give you those steps too. And then you can give them your cool tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, here's the burger warm up. You know, we're going to limit the amount of times each you hit your head by 10. Note, this does not relate to steel mace. You will hit yourself in the head many times. Yes. Wear a, wear a helmet. Um, <laughs> Um, one of the key words that you use multiple times um, is listening. Um, and I remember I had a, what we call it intro session, which is just our first day where we bring people in to talk um, and tell them about the gym and um, to ask some questions. And this, this one girl, she ended up signing up and joining the gym and she made a post on Instagram and tagged me in it. I didn't know she was going to. And one of the things she said was when I walked in and Kron asked me what I wanted, she didn't just assume because I was a bigger girl that I wanted weight loss. She asked me what my goals were and what I wanted out of, out of coming to the gym rather than assuming like every other trainer has that I wanted to lose weight. And, you know, something like that really hit me and I, I was really appreciative of her, you know, saying that publicly as well, you know, um, because that we, I find a lot of our, a lot of coaches just assume, uh, what people want. Like you said, you think, you know, what people want and aren't necessarily listening to what those, those pain points or those goals or why a client is actually, um, there in front of you at the gym or on a, on a discovery call or whatever that might be. Um, what is, what is your experience with just increasing the amount of listening to actually hear and, and to learn from your clients? Yeah. The, the first thing is a, a, like an all stop on guessing, mm -hmm. right, right? Just stop guessing what your clients want. Stop guessing what your next program is going to be. The biggest fallacy is you will build it and they will come. <laughs> it's just, you didn't, that's you that you did that for you. You didn't do that for them. Uh, however, however much you want to like try to state that. So the practicing on listening, we do a couple, couple things. One is to play a game called the curiosity game. And so really within the strong coach structure, and I love doing this outside of it too. We've done it with training camp, the soul. Um, and I imagine it would be great skills for, for, for Unlifted too. Um, and really any coaching practice, but it's a, it's a game of which you only ask questions. And you can do this on a few different, you can just have a list of questions and just ask them and take them down a ladder. Or you can find little rabbit holes. And I hope we're still going because I think you guys are both frozen on the screen. Oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. there we go. <laughs> there you guys are back. You're back. All We're right, just so really still. Yeah. anticipating your response <laughs> we're at the curiosity game and we're series of asking questions and one of the biggest things is going down these rabbit holes with the person that you're talking to this is great like first dating material even if you're doing the like the if you're doing the app dating and you're just asking questions back and forth you can continue to go further and further down into the conversation you know it's what did you have for breakfast this morning and then they say oh why is that important to you and then it's like oh when's the first time that you grab got eggs out of a, of a barn or whatever. You can keep going and you get these amazing, all of a sudden it'll catch and someone will tell you this amazing story. And the whole practice of this is not only asking questions, but sitting without response and really just hear what they have to say. And you can practice this a few different ways. A lot of times it's just repeating a, a word or two at the end that'll help you retain like that you heard something of there and then you can follow down that, that hole or you can just say thank you and move on to the next question. So that's a big, uh, that's a big piece of this. Well, we're also in big into um, in this community around affirmations. And if this is something that you want to be recognized for, then create an affirmation around that. I had one, uh, a mantra of mine that was thank you for listening. Because I wanted to hear that more. I felt when someone said that to me, it made me feel really good. I was like, oh, that's exactly how I wanted to show up for this thing. So I started writing down in my, my mantras, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. And then anytime someone says that, that reaffirms that that is the role that I'm playing and I am practicing what I preach. 
And so if that's something you want to be known for, then start writing that down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love my, I love affirmations. And something else that I do daily in my like morning journal practice is I write out um, what I'm committed to for that day. And I write it in the past tense. So like, um, usually on, you know, Wi-Fi, aka podcast Wednesdays, <laughs> I, I write what I'm committed to do today is um, today I asked great questions, right? And it goes along with that. Like, I'm, I'm curious. I don't, I don't, we didn't bring Jared on to the podcast to listen to me and Chris, Kristen talk about, I mean, I'll, we don't get to hear Chris. We don't get to hear me anyway. <laughs> I, I wanted to hear Kristen. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I see you. At least I see you. But I also found that really helpful. Like, um, even just, you know, I, today I drank, you know, two full water bottles of a water and then I've committed myself to it that day. I've, I'm now the person that is well hydrated and drank two full water bottles uh, for that day. And, and playing with affirmations and writing things down have such a powerful um, impact. Um, how has your affirmations um, impacted you? I mean, you mentioned like some, what, like writing down what you wanna hear more of, but tell me a little bit more about your affirmation practice. Tell us, Kristen still. Yeah. I am still here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Tell you, ladies. Uh, so I've had a few over a uh, few over the years. Um, uh, some have been more intense uh, than the other ones. Um, you know what you had just talked about was a huge practice of mine. Being a parent is helping my children create uh, past tense affirmations as well. Uh, in a very recent experience, we were hanging out at the skate park, and. <laughs> when someone's just hanging out at the top of the ramp, just psyching themselves out, all you want to do is like, just go, just <laughs> go. Okay. Three, two, go, <laughs> go. And then there's this point of parenting where you're like, all right, do I pull them away from this thing? Do I tell them to stop? Like, is this my anxiety? Is it there? Anyways. So I was like, Hey, can, can we take a break for a second? He's like, yeah. You know, he's, you can tell like his breathing is in his neck. He's, mm -hmm. his, his heart is racing. And it's like, do you want to go down the ramp today? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, can you say I went down the ramp today? And he's like, he just freezes. I was like, so you could, you're, does, I'm not saying do it right now. Cause he like stepped forward to his board. And it's like, no, just say, I went down the ramp today. And then I had him take a breath. Because that's what I do. I do with everyone, right? <laughs> I went down the ramp today, did a breath. I don't know, probably 30 seconds, 45 seconds later, he steps up there, three, two, one, and drops into this thing. Mm. I've eaten shit every single time that I've tried to do this ramp, and he crushes the first time through. Mm. And then it was, I don't know, 15 minutes later, my other youngest, so he was he was going down this this ramp and he is way more than capable of it, but he's just freaking himself out. And my other kid came over and was like, hey, dude, just say, hey, you went down the ramp today. It'll get you going. <laughs> and he thought this was, this was like a magic, like a magic power. And so it is a spell. You can, pa you can pass <laughs> tense that stuff all the time. It's like, I made this call today. I reached out to these many people today. Um, and so you can play with this on very small scales. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm a big fan of a thing called inspired action and using your mantras or using your affirmations to guide you to the next step. Mm -hmm. And so this would be like the most intense process, but this is also how I practice with people is after you've done some goal setting and after you understand where it is that you want to go, what are some of the listings? What are some of the attributes of a person that does those things? And when you, when you say them, there, there's magic there because it does two things. And uh, we probably talk about it on this podcast a lot, but it, it shows up in two ways, a feeling and a sensation inside of your body and then an imaginative play or picture inside your brain, inside your head. What you see on there is only visible to you. The only way for me to see what your vision is, is for you to get it outside, to express it from your body. Uh, and so you can do that by writing it down or even better acting it out so that I get to see it. Uh, 
And so whatever it is that you uh, want for yourself or to see yourself do, you have to tell us. You have to write it down. You have to get outside of your body or else it's never going to come true because we don't know. Um, only you know what that looks like and what that feels like. But if you can express that, if you can get that outside of your body, you're more likely to take action on it because you can see yourself doing it and then you can go. It's very much similar to the four minute mile. The, the record stood for like 70 years, if not more. And then all of a sudden it happens and the next year, 10 people do it. They just need to see an example of it happening and you don't have to wait for someone else to do it. You can play that in your imagination and you can even feel that in your imagination. So when you actually go do it, it just lights you up inside. Mm -hmm. So the practice is having your goals, creating an affirmation with it. And then in the morning, picking, start with one. One is a lot, especially the beginning facing your discomforts. One is a, one is a lot. Three is the max that I go mm -hmm. of reading out your affirmations, seeing it, feeling it, and then expressing that this is what it looks like. And then going and doing it that day. And the momentum builds way faster than you can imagine. And it's the three or four days in a row and you're like, holy shit, I didn't know I could get this stuff done. So that's where, that's what mm. I use. That's my practice. What, um, what is the most uncomfortable question uh, that people can ask themselves or one of the most uncomfortable? So, so much pressure asking the most uncomfortable question. One of the most uncomfortable questions people can ask themselves in order to get started on a, a social rebellion or a pirate journey or just really living their best life. I think the scariest thing is, is the relationship aspect of it. And so if it's, if it's asking yourself, who are you afraid to talk to? Or who are you afraid to be honest with? Those are some of the like those the the seeds that you can plant. Because if you're afraid of talking to your your spouse, or if you're even afraid to say them out loud because you don't know what you're gonna do with that information is is huge. And so even you know, being comfortable with yourself on that stuff, but then also when you talk about these other people, what are they afraid of? Right. And let's talk about the social rebellion. It can be from a place of passion, but when you start to talk to other people and understanding that this is the fear that people they're worried about this and they're worried about that, you'll find a collective voice there and you can start a rebellion on that. Like, how do you help people face that fear? And I believe that's what I'm, I'm one of the best in the world at, which is understanding that it's not once you don't just recognize that I'm afraid of talking to my spouse about this thing and then go, go talk to your spouse about doing that thing. It's, <laughs> that's not a one step move. It's so uh, <laughs> most people are afraid of the fourth or fifth step when it comes to facing their fears, mm. right? Writing it down is a very entry level position there. And even before that, it might just be sit in meditation with it. It might be think about this, and then express onto the paper what that looks like. And so let's say it is talking to your spouse about something that's uncomfortable. Maybe you want something more in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to ask for something for yourself. If depending on your level of, of, of communication, but if you're afraid to talk to them about this thing, it's probably miles back, but it could be, hey, I want to talk to you about something that really scares me. Do you have a few minutes to talk about it? And they're going to say, yeah. And it's like, well, not right now. I can't, I don't want to talk about it right now. Like, like in a week, can we do it? Can we do it in a week? And it's like, yeah, I'll do it. But that gives you, you know, that allows you to say, I'm, I'm about to say something vulnerable. I'm about to say something scary. And then you can go back and do some of the work, mm -hmm. right? You can come back with that, that. What's the most agreeable step to you? And I think that's really how you face your fears. You can run and jump and cannonball into it. And good luck to you because it's a Pandora's box. When you start facing fears, they'll come at you quick. <laughs> they'll come at you quick, but we can really walk ourselves and we can dose ourselves into this experience by asking for a place, by showing our vulnerability in the scenario, uh, and then really allowing ourselves to ask questions and be curious without the pressure to respond or have an answer. 
<laughs> because maybe you do want to heal the, a conversation or a, a relationship, but you don't know what it actually looks like on the other side because you don't know what, where that other person's at. And so with more information, we're going to have a better understanding of what the next conversation is going to be. Mm -hmm. So I would say for most people, it's like your fear or facing your fear is three or four steps away. So if you can leave your fear over here and then talk about what is the first thing that we can do to take steps towards that, that's really what we're looking for. And maybe that's just a coach in me looking for progressions. Mm -hmm. But I've helped so many people get something out of their marriage or reestablish responsibilities at work or create a new career path for themselves just by taking these incremental steps towards it. And it feels so much better because you're not, it's a, not a coach telling you to double your rates. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't see the value in it, then how are you going to believe that you're worth double mm -hmm. or your products double? But when you start talking to people and then you charge a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, all of a sudden it's three, five, 10 times more than you were charging and you feel awesome about it. Mm -hmm. One yes. of the guys, Sorry. one of the guys, well, uh, <laughs> I just want to brag about some, someone that I worked with is yeah. they were going around and doing weekend courses for $400 at a time which sounds great until he goes, I don't want to travel anymore. I would rather do this on a regular, on a quarterly basis. So how much would I need to get paid in order to do this? And he goes $4,000. And so the next call that he got, the woman on the other side of the phone was like, great. I had a budget of $5,000 for this event. And so he was able to do this for $4,000, 10 times the rate of what he was doing. And now he only has to travel three times a year to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and so to me, that's like, you can make crazy jumps and at the same time, you can work on the smaller ones too. You know, it might be doing a free thing, get some reps and then it's a $20 thing and it's a $50 thing. And those are all stories. And we know that we can just breathe through those and make those our own journey. So mm -hmm. it's a long winded answer to what's your scariest question. What's your most fearful question. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable question. Yeah. It would be the relationship, either relationship to yourself or relationship to others. And mm -hmm. what are you afraid of in those relationships? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like what you say um, about taking the baby steps. And that's where, like, when we talk about goal setting um, and the work that we do with Unlifted, uh, you know, we call, we talk about chunking it down, right? Because you get, you get paralyzed by this seemingly huge goal ahead of you that you don't know where to start. And so you don't, right. Whereas it could be just doing some research on that thing online first. Um, you know, maybe it's a, a you want to get your master's. Okay. Well, let's do some research on that. Or how much is that going to cost? How much do I need to save? What do I need to know? Right. And we chunking it down and making these small steps. So that first of all, you, you gather momentum with your progress. And so you feel like you, you mean, because you are getting somewhere closer to that goal rather than just staring at the giant mountain ahead of you one step at a time, right? Yeah. Uh, Kristen, do you want to try talking? Uh, I, um, I also just got something in my eye. So <laughs> <laughs> today is my day. <laughs> um, yes, I will try. Um, hopefully, you I said, and First off, um, back to what you were saying about it's all in the mindset, something that I really resonated with because I had to, I got to, um, while talking with a coach friend that the difference between me asking for like, say 200 a session versus 2000 a session, it's all right in my head. It's what I'm telling myself I'm worth because I've been going through programs and it's the belief so that that really stuck out and resonated with me when you said that, that there, it's what you believe. Um, taking those small steps to get there is very helpful too. Now, how much of that did you get? <laughs> I got most, I'm extremely patient. <laughs> So rather than go, oh, 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 maybe it's going to catch up. Maybe I'll get the fast forward version. Sometimes that happens on Zoom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you're absolutely right. Even the amount of words 
used in order to say I charge $200 versus I charge $2,000 is the exact same, right? So the effort there is, but what's going on, our imagination starts to look completely different. But when we also look at like, what if life, what if you were charging $2,000, how many people are you working with? What does life look like now when you have five clients versus when you're charging two? It's like, well, I can't even pay for my car note and gas and groceries with this. But on this other side, I can actually pay for my car, like my house. I can pay for my car. I can pay for my, you know, my kids to go do these things. And really it's just an extra zero on some of these things, but how we interpret that runs rampant in our head until we get it out, we slow it down. And again, going back to talking to our clients, it's really understanding how painful their experience is right now. Like they, we don't really understand what other people are going through unless we ask those questions. And $2,000 or $10,000 to get a coach to relieve them from that, like, oh, that's gotta feel great. I love looking on Instagram and seeing coaches sitting in Bali, like training their clients and making more money than they ever have. And it's like, this was a 10 year goal and it took buying a plane ticket and shifting your offer from this is how I coach to this. And so there are some basic steps there, but it, took, it you know, in his life, it was going to be 10 years before he got to experience that, not 10 weeks. Hmm. Crazy. And so what are some of the bold actions that you've taken to get to where you are now? Some highlights. I feel like I imagine there's many. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I wrote, ah, it's funny that you bring it up. I wrote that down in my journal today um, through a series of stream of conscious writing was recognizing that I, I often look back at some of these experiences that I've been through and it's like, Ooh, if I had done this, it would have been, amazing. Well, if I did this, oh, how would this adjust it? So I play time traveler a lot. (laughs) And then I recognized after I was saying those things, it's like, bro, what did you have to do to get to that place? And so there's a few things that I, that I've done. I would say starting back in high school, um, start, I'll, I'll see if I can do some big chunks here, but starting back in high school, I had, to, we lived in this like podunk town, 420 people total in the town. And I lived just outside of the school, um, the school zone or whatever. So I had to pay tuition to go to this like really dumpy town. Um, and it prevented me from uh, playing in sports because it was rules and regulations but i went in and asked the coach like hey are you still willing to open up the like the gym i would love to start weight training i've never done it before and so i was like oh can you do this as a sophomore in high school and i was like i can't play but i can practice like are you open to me practicing with the team and he was like absolutely and so what i was able to do then was i got in the best shape of my life at that point in time was my first like real transformation by just asking for support asking for help from this stranger that i met walking around the school and that essentially started this entire like we had uh, by my senior year weightlifting was a class that you could take at the at the school uh, because we made it such a popular thing with the the athletes um, and then moving, uh, <laughs> moving further towards that, um, in college, I was looking at what, uh, what school that I wanted to move on to for my junior and senior year. And the same kind of thing came up, uh, was I was offered a, a full ride scholarship at this one school in the middle of Indiana. And I was set on going. And then Hawaii was like, Hey, if you guys want, if you want to come to Hawaii, we don't have a spot for you now but we can put you on a red shirt and then we can put you on a a scholarship the next year. And it was like, I'm going to take a bet on myself and say with another year of practice, look what it did for me in football. What I think is going to do for me in college basketball. And so I was able to go out there and Hawaii is kind of a difficult place to live. I know it might not sound that way, but it is. You're very far away from home and especially with a bunch of kids, people don't like that. And so 
several kids quit the team before the school even started and I was able to get a scholarship uh, from day one. And, um, and so I thought that was, that was dope in order to get me to these next levels. I follow my intuition on a lot of those things when I know that I'm uh, investing in myself. Um, same thing happened with my first job out of college. I saw some cool shit from Lululemon before Lululemon was a thing. And I was like, I want to do that. They did like this, like yoga pose where the two guys were like bouncing on top of each other. And I was like, I want to do that. I, but I didn't really know what I was getting into women's retail, women's apparel. Uh, and I crushed it. I loved the community aspects of it. Um, and really just like to lean into things like that. Um, I would say the biggest bold action that took me from this place of survival working three jobs, had a one-year-old kid, going through a lot of depression issues, um, is that the first time that the gym owner gave me a key to open up the gym, I was like, thank you for this. I can't wait to own this place one day. Mm. And he goes, just make sure that you open it and you don't lose the key. Like <laughs> my entire life's in this thing. Like the gym has been open for a year, maybe. And I told him I was going to own it, mm -hmm. but it was two years later, he took up a new hobby and it was outside of the gym for a long time. It's like, just tell people that I'm part owner that you're training me on this. And then, so that's what people believed. And then a year later he was on his way out. And so it was an easy transition. And I became one of the the, the head people at the gym, uh, making more money than I ever had before, setting my own hours, being able to hire other people uh, to make a more joyful life for me and a joyful life for these other people. Uh, and so even just saying that this is what my vision is, to me, that that's how I create bold action is that I dream big and I share that. Mm -hmm. I'll keep, I can keep telling stories all day. We don't even have, we don't even have cannabis in the mix. If you guys, well, <laughs> next time, <laughs> next time, but this is probably my biggest one in it. In it, in it. It's, it's a deep one for me, but uh, I first wrote my 10 year vision when I was 24 years old and 36 now. And in my 10 year vision, I said that I lived in two places, somewhere in the Northeast and someplace tropical. And uh, two years ago, so it's been 10 years on that vision, uh, my, my ex-partner, uh, she was like, hey, I'm really interested in moving back to Hawaii. Uh, we are living in Boston. I currently live in Boston. She goes, I'm interested in moving back to, to Hawaii, but I'm not going to do it unless that's something that you're interested in as well. And I said, I'm not interested in moving back, <clears throat> but I am interested in living in both places as often as I can be. And uh, at the time I was working at the gym and I was starting with the strong coach. So I'm like, dual income, let's go baby. <laughs> but I had this 10 year vision before I even, like before we even really met, before we even knew each other. And so when this opportunity came up, it was like, well, I've thought about this for 10 years. What do you think my answer is going to be? Mm -hmm. And it was very scary and very difficult, but it was saying yes to that because I knew that this is part of my journey. We're losing Jared now. Okay, I'm like, is it me? Is it okay. you? I didn't want to. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. That's a good one, actually. Wow. I hope they will get him back soon. Um, in the meantime, oh, oh, there you are. <laughs> See you this time. Hi, that this was time. me. We lost you for a little while. That happens. You had a cool, we like, techno <laughs> stuttery thing going on. It was, it was wicked. Well, what was the last thing you heard? I can catch back up. That's a good question. Was it? Um, <laughs> well, you were, you were, it was your 10 year vision with the whole the moving to Hawaii thing so you're like obviously my answer is going to be yes and oh yeah then you kind of yeah froze. so <laughs> how like how did that work well it was going back into uh some of the things we had talked about like these are going to be some scary things so let's upgrade our communication uh and so me and my ex started to communicate more about what this looked like and what roles we were going to play for them and uh, so I, I created a schedule where I was going to go out there every hundred days or so. And, uh, and then there was this thing called a pandemic that happened mm -hmm. the next year. Uh, and so again, like 
it gave us an opportunity to get creative with this stuff. And they were able to fly out um, and meet me on my way back from Utah or something like that. So we had this like cross country road trip and then they stayed with us for a couple of months. And, uh, and then we flew them back because they were doing virtual school. So you can mm-hmm. do that anywhere. And so it was fun to, to have that experience. They came out and they just stayed with us for the, uh, the summertime. So we're creating this cool world where they get to experience a whole gamut of things and really live this untraditional lifestyle. Um, but they're so much more accustomed to talking to adults, navigating the unknown, uh, adapting to new situations. And to me, that's really how you become a better human is really understanding how to, how to navigate that stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think the original question was what bold actions have you taken and what do you do? And it's really living into those visions and not being afraid of saying what they are and acting on them when the opportunity is presented to you. Uh, Cause you never know when it's going to come that, you know, it was eight years before that was even on the table uh, for that 10 year vision. Uh, and so it was cool that, uh, that it just came up that way. Who knows what's going to be the next thing, but we'll, mm-hmm. we'll be writing that. And where can our listeners go to find out more about you and what you do? Yeah, right now my Instagram handle is Captain J Davis. Uh, and so you can find me there. Uh, also, if you're a coach, uh, a trainer, a gym owner, an instructor, a teacher, uh, if you go over to the Strong Coach, uh, we just have a gang of resources there for, uh, for people to get clarity on what it is they want and then help them create an action step towards, um, towards that life. And so those are the two best places to reach me at. Hey, cool. I have a question. As long as it lets me say it. <laughs> so the question is part of like pirate being pirate is celebrating it's um, and throwing parties. And you, you and I have been chatting that we both are very much party. <laughs> like let's celebrate, let's throw parties. So what have you been? Um, to throw better parties than those that are trying to destroy destroy the earth. Yeah, so uh, I love parties. Hi, my name's Jared, and I like to party. Um, <laughs> that's my intro. Um, so this stems back to uh, my 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 parents were big into like costumes for Halloween. So I always like I always saw these like adults partying and getting really done up for them. So then when I was in a position to throw parties at our CrossFit gym, I was like, we're getting dressed up. We're having things. We're going to like, we're going to make this fun. And people wanted to actually come to my gym or support the competitions that we did because we had awesome parties. Um, and continuing that into my strong coach phase that started with burning man, which is like the, one of the largest parties on earth. Uh, and that's what kicked off like, Oh, there is levels to partying. Mm-hmm. Uh, and most recently I went out to Austin, Texas last year. Cause I thought there was going to be some like down low partying going on. I was actually invited to this amazing family's home for this like love portal connection uh, but they had these little jelly beads in a pool and I didn't know what they were until about midnight that night and this guy goes have you been in this thing yet and I was like nope mm-hmm. he goes take off all of your clothes and get in here and I was like okay <laughs> that's what you, you say that's what you say after someone asks you that yes mm-hmm. okay so I stripped down and I get into all these little beads I'm talking there's millions of them. Let's say 10 million beats. That's probably an under underestimation. And I just get consumed by this sensation. There's all these little beads touching my skin. They're pressing on me. And then my inner child just lit up, as you can probably tell now on the video, my hands are going yeah. wild. <laughs> my internet's going to break because I'm too energetic right now. <laughs> Anyways, I started to realize like there are so many things that you could do in this to change your experience. And so I started to think about, oh, what if I move really slowly? And it was like, oh my God, this is the greatest feeling ever. And then what if I move really fast? Oh my God, this is... And I just kept exploring all these things and then realizing that they are a child's toy, that these little beads were originally made for house plants. Um, there was a huge boom on the YouTube influencer uh, 
uh, sites about two years ago around Orbeez, uh, which were a little bit larger version of what these things were. And then I realized like, I have to find these. I have to get these out to people. And I spent uh, a week in Texas with uh, Leo Savage. <laughs> we found them in Walmart and we bought like a human sized cooler because they sell that at Walmart. And we <laughs> made our, we made our own started experimenting with it. And then I found a, a resource for me to package those. And I started to gift these out to people uh, as well as sell them in the smaller packages. And so I call them sensory amplification beads because it just turns everything on. And from a therapeutic sense, once everything is being touched around you, it allows you to have an awareness to turn that off. And you can go a little bit further in a little bit further in and a little bit further in. So even though this became this like party thing for me and something that I got to gift out to people, the therape therapeutic benefits were the thing that really launched out. It was a low tech thing, but with a very high um, engagement with your internal structures. And so we've taken this now to putting these, these beads on a vibrating table uh, and it really just starts to like get at your core of a human being. But to me, I think it's the next thing after float tanks because you're completely surrounded by this thing and or an extremely zero G. It doesn't matter what position that you're in, you're going to experience comfort like you've never had before. You've never gotten this good of a hug unless you've hugged me and then it's the jelly pools. <laughs> so if I can get more people in these jelly pools, there's going to be more happiness going around. Mm -hmm. But to me, this is like the ultimate party favor. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited. I got to do one with Ryan Sprague, another one of our pirate friends. Mm -hmm. um, and then he got rained out. It was crazy rain mm -hmm. for a week here in Boston. Uh, so I didn't really get to experience it yet, but uh, uh, I'm sure there'll be a party that you guys will be invited to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll give you guys the real, the real deal. We are laying out. Yes. Yeah. I've gotten to, when I first learned about these beads, I learned about them from the teaching end and how for sensory tubes or tubs. <laughs> um, and then here you were like, fill up just these. Like, um, yeah, I watched a whole bunch of uh, late 20s, early, mid 30 year old adults like be like, ooh, what is this? And getting, getting in and getting excited. Um, there was so much play. I'm looking forward for the full, ex full Jared experience in the future. Yeah. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a dream job of mine to be a, ge <laughs> a gel at lifeguard. <laughs> so I just want to sit by it, like in instruct people through. Cause it, I got to that night that I got to experience it. I stayed over the night. So the next day I was there, people were coming back to the party and just rolled into a whole Sunday service type of thing. But I found myself having just as much fun introducing people to it that I did actually doing it myself. And so I was like, all right, before you get in, think about five-year-old Kristen. And what did she do when she got a new Lego set? And it's like, okay, now get in. And bam, you are in it. And your face lights up and, and really like putting your hands in it and your feet in it feels really awesome. And it is not even close to what it feels like to lay out flat. Being in the stall, the, the tank that you guys are in, cool. I bet you felt awesome, but it's not even close. <laughs> not even close to being the full thing. Um, it's one of those like you had to be there, mm -hmm. but you will be there. Mm -hmm. Well, Kristen and I are planning, uh, you know, breaking news here. Uh, Kristen and I are planning uh, with some other folks uh, to hold some pirate festivals. So uh, that would be awesome for the pirate cool. festival. We'll have to bring you and your, your beads. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll make some people walk the plank. Oh, <gasps> well, yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> they just belly flop and they're like, no. Oh, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> That's a great idea. And they'll just shimmy in until they can't see until they're just their face showing. And they're like, what is this? You're like, it's the greatest thing you've ever experienced. I know. Very they're like, what about this? Everyone's imagination just sparks. What if we put lights in here? What if it vibrates? What if it was heated? What if there was jets to it? It's like, keep going. Keep telling me. Yeah. I'm here for it all. 150 ideas instantly. My thing was, you can't have an argument in here. 
like this is going to solve a lot of conflict in the world. You just put two people that are, you know, uh, in conflict with each other in here and say, try to argue. And they're going to be like, why, why though? I think we can work this out. <laughs> it's like, you can't, um, you can't skip and frown. It's like, yeah, <laughs> <Tom> exactly. And- <laughs> exactly. Take off all your clothes, get in here. And they're going to be like, um, yep. That's the step one. <laughs> we'll put all our politicians in there, the world leaders. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The teach them about consent <laughs> teach them about the power of their words they already know guys the linguistic programming they already know what they're doing mm-hmm. so how would you recommend our listeners go about starting uh, their own pirate life mm. get clear on the things that you like to do for fun mm. I would say, I always try to look at like, what's the result that you're looking for? Find pirate friends. Where do pirate friends hang out? And it's like, first of all, recognize that you're a pirate. You have the ability to be a pirate. What is it that you like to do? And then start going and doing that. Even if you're not good, even if you don't know where to start, do things that you like to do and keep exploring that stuff. Your level of weird, your level of excitement, your level of awesomeness is all going to start shining when you're doing the things that you like doing. And that's what makes you an attractive human being. And that's what all of a sudden you're going to do things that you love doing. And then you're going to find people that love doing those things, things too. You too might have experienced this as well. Right. And so that's the secret sauce is finding out what it is that you love to do and then going and doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you continue to do that stuff, you'll find the people that, that are in the same wavelength in there. And then you'll start to find what are those similarities? You know, what do they find? Like, what are the bumps in the road? What are the potholes of this game or this thing that we're playing? And let's try to do something about it. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's where you're going to build that, that revolution or that, that pirate group is like, let's make a ruckus here. You know, either let's throw a party, let's get loud, let's bring some people in um, and really start inviting people. That's the next thing. Do what you love to do and then get good at inviting people. That's something I say every day, which is you should come. It's really hard to turn that down. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to go do this like this thing over here. There's going to be some cool people. There's going to be some food and we're probably going to drink afterwards. You should come. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, all right, I'll go. People love to be invited. Even if they turn you down, they love to be invited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So first get that confidence that you know that you like it and then start inviting people. Yeah, that's great advice. Mm-hmm. Um, Kristen, before I ask the last question, do you have anything else? That is it. I'll let you ask that last question. Okay. The most important one. What? Most important question, Jared. Do you I have know? A list of, I have a list of questions for you two. Oh, oh crap. We well, got another hour to go. I'm this is <laughs> <laughs> well, before, well, you can ask us a question here. Do you know any pirate jokes? I do have one. Have you heard of the one with the shaky pirate ship at the bottom of the sea? We have not. It's a nervous wreck. <laughs> Oh, good one. <laughs> well done. Well played, sir. <laughs> that was a good one, right? That was a good one. They're all great. There's all pirate jokes are great. Uh, do you guys have a, um, a, a pirate flag of your own? I have two. Mm. <laughs> Is it a red background with a black skull on it, like your logo? Oh, you mean like our own? Oh, Ooh, a branded that's a one. Great idea. Not yet. Yes, we need one of those. And then yeah. I have three. three. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I love to do is is the best advertising for your thing are the people that interact like interact with us. So like CrossFit gym, it's like mm-hmm. you make a CrossFit shirt that ha- like that says your logo on it, and then people wear it to the gym and they wear it around. Uh, one of the things that I love that my uh, that my partner has done is put a lemon stick. Like she gives her clients lemon stickers here's another one of them here's my stickers but she'll give people stickers like this and then they can put on their water bottle and whatnot and then when they show up on shows and they do this Mm -hmm. they got their logo right right in front of you (laughs) 
And so giving people things to share is another way to build your pirate community is having one of those things, you know, as we've seen with Abracadabra mm -hmm. uh, and through the Mark England. Well, and something new that just came, I, I'm like all far away from me. We have stickers. Um, so we have that and we are planning on handing them out so that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And lo lovely merchandise mm -hmm. uh, that Kristen has been oh, yes. amazingly creating. This. A little pirate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. We're, we got you covered. And yes, <laughs> the stickers are on the way. <laughs> I love apparel design. That was one of the things I love most about being at the, like, be, like running my own gym was I just made my own clothes. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I need sweatpants. <laughs> Guys, we have sweatpants for sale. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. all right well it's been really great talking to you jared and catching up with you because i haven't talked to you in a little while um yeah thank you so much for joining us today and uh can't wait to talk to you again soon and and have you join us at our pirate festival date to mm -hmm. be determined i would i would love to be invited uh karan and kristen thank you so much for having me on here and guiding this pirate ship of yours i uh, really appreciate the opportunity to uh, to speak to share some messages and my last statement is you should come to the festival. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs>